you're able to capitalize on the effort that you've put in by capturing the details of the person who who is looking at it and being able to actually then have a powerful conversation with them and nurture them to the point where they buy your product or your service and continue to engage with you in in a in a way that is you know built on community and trust and then knowing and liking and trusting you enough to want to buy from you are in for a treat today. This is exactly what you have been asking for. I'm so excited to have Lauren Arms on the show today. And check this out. Before she says anything, I'm just going to say exactly what it says on her website. And you guys are going to get so excited. She says, I help experts in the wellness industry to make a mark, make an impact and make money. Those words are going to resonate exactly with my audience. Um, Lauren, welcome to the show. It's such a pleasure to be on your incredible podcast. I am so excited and we are all about impact. Um, Yes, we're about making money, but we're also about making the mark. So I'm literally going to be picking your brains and all of the questions that I know that my audience have in their head right now we're going to go through. But just to get started, can you tell us a little bit about you, who you are, where you live right now, because you're living in a different country than where you are, and like how you got to this place? So I've been living in the UK for seven years. And for the last five years, I've been running a business called well to do And everything that we do at well to do is about helping people build high impact, and successful, profitable businesses in the wellness industry. And um, I came into this space because I had a personal passion for the wellness industry. um, And I could see that the UK especially was kind of starting to to adopt a lot of the cool wellness trends that we were seeing in the States. And, And they were things like, you know, cool boutique spinning studios and juice bars and you know, cool supplement brands and people just being more aware of their own personal well-being. And so I started well to do to just create this conversation around entrepreneurship and wellness. And I think the thing that I felt most passionate about in starting this business was really speaking to an audience of people who are passionate about what they do, but also want to make money. And just having this conversation about how you know, that's okay. It's okay to do work that you love and make money at the same time to create an impact, to change people's lives and also be rewarded for for that work that you do. And, you know, so many people that I speak to in this space have come from kind of corporate careers and um, have stepped away from really high paying jobs to do something that they love and sort of feel that disconnect. Because frankly, when you work in the wellness space, so often you love what you do so much that you would actually do it for free. And that's how passionate you feel about it, about it. But if you can also marry that with a business model that allows you to build something sustainable, then you can have an even greater impact on yourself and transform your own life in the process. Um, And so everything we do is about helping people to build that kind of business. Uh, I also work as a business coach, so I love supporting um, particularly experts in the wellness industry who have knowledge and value to share and want to turn that into an awesome business. Uh, And yeah, so that's what I've been doing over the last five years. That's awesome. And I'm so glad that you touched on the fact of like, we would do this stuff for free because I think a lot of times we get in our head, well, I can't charge for this. I don't know if I can make money doing this. I don't want to feel like I'm being salesy. So how do you work with someone who's like, I really want to be a wellness coach. I want to help people. I want to make impact, but I don't know if I want to make a lot of money. The thing is that we don't want to make money just for the sake of money, right? Like the question that you really need to ask yourself is what kind of life do I want to live? What kind of impact do I want to have? And when you start to answer those questions, you start to frame a scenario which inevitably requires some kind of capital. Like 
money is the thing that keeps the world going. It keeps charitable foundations going. It keeps, you know, families connected. It's the thing that the, the energy that allows us to achieve our life's work. So, you know, a desire to be rich in my mind, isn't just kind of about lying in piles of cash. It's like being rich is about allowing you to live the type of life that you want to, which is a life that enables you to have freedom to do the things that you want to do, um, that enables you to impact the people that you want to impact, to help the people that you want to impact. And so, you know, if there's a disconnect between the work that somebody does when I have this conversation and their desire to make money from it, I think there's a more important conversation about what your goals are, what kind of life you want to live and why you're doing this work so that we create meaning behind money because money loves to have a purpose, right? We don't crave the financial reward. We crave the, what it enables us to do with our lives or to experience or to be or to have. Yeah, that's so true. And I always say like, you know, the more impact that you have, often the more money that you will make. So be excited about making more money because it will show that you're actually making more impact. Um, and when good people have money, we can do good things with it. That's what we want to do. Is we want to we want to get all the good mo all the money into the good people's hands. And so you know, I think there's an amazing billionaire from China, and she has donated you know more money than anybody to wildlife and, and foundations. It's like, yes, you're a billionaire, but what are you doing with that money? Like, it's okay to to make that money. So I'm really glad that you that you touched on that. Let's get from the start. So if someone's brand new, or maybe they've been a wellness coach for a while, and they're just kind of, you know, what we call like stuck, I don't really know where I'm going. Why do people have such a fear about taking that leap and making action? Like, what do you, where do you think that fear comes from? And how can we get over that? So many places, doesn't it? Like, we all have stories that we tell ourselves about what is possible for us. And I remember, um, I know you're, you're, you're really into your personal development and growth and I know your listeners will be as well, but as soon as you start to explore this path of personal growth, you realize that as well as growth, there are also a few kind of hurdles that you have to jump over and what they usually look like are kind of stories that you have been playing in your mind through either some kind of conditioning or some kind of story that you were told or that your parents were told that they told you. And, you know, an example of that might be something like um, hard work equals success, right? And so when you carry that into entrepreneurship, for example, you're constantly thinking like the harder I work, the more opportunities that will come to me. And in reality, like the opposite to that might be true. It might be possible for you to attract opportunities working less or working more effectively or working smarter. And so there's an example in that of a fear that we might have that gets in the way of us achieving our goals. And your fear might be, you know, I don't have enough time. I don't know, have enough knowledge. I don't, you know, I'm not qualified enough. And what these stories do is they become excuses for us that stop us from reaching our full potential. And so the work that I would do with a client is to challenge the way they have been thinking for maybe years and years and years and years and the compounding effect of that belief system that makes it so ingrained in us that we can almost not see another way. And, and yet like we're looking at life through a certain lens. And that lens is often being conditioned through, you know, through our circumstances and our environment for, for such a long time that that personal growth journey often requires us to make some pretty radical changes to the way that we may have been thinking for a long time. And to recognize that the fear that we have is an opportunity for us to you know, do something pretty radical in our lives and to, to move through that fear or to you know, there's the quote that you see on Instagram and we kind of like it, but when we really think into it, that quote that says, you know, everything that you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear, right? And so if everything you've ever wanted is on the other side of fear, there's a process in that, in that um, philosophy that you've got to move through it. You've got to shift things. You've got to change the way you view the world or your limitations, uh, and that that's not an overnight process. It's like a muscle that you work out, that you continue to work out. And 
that you know arises constantly throughout the whole journey of life yeah, it's so true. And so do you feel like when you're working with a client, you're like, right, this person is maybe a bit scared, a bit fearful to go out and find clients or, you know, to start their business. What are the, some daily things that people can do to make sure that they're taking action, they're making progress, um, but also that they are, they're building their business? And so... I mean, I think that so often we kind of write down our goals and the things that we want to achieve and we forget that, you know, goals and achieving goals are a process of tiny little steps that we take each day. And um, there's a really great book that I love and that I often recommend to clients called The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. I don't know if you've read that one, but it's, um, it, it's based on this principle that success is is the result of the accumulation of lots of daily disciplined actions and lots of tiny daily disciplined actions that almost feel when we're in the moment doing them like irrelevant. It's almost like, you know, if we were to use the example of like getting fit, like if you did 10 squats a day, but you did them every single day, when you're doing like 10 squats, you're probably thinking this is so pointless. Like it's so insignificant. It probably takes like 20 seconds. And yet, if you did that every single day, eventually you would feel some strength in your legs, right? And, and it's the same if you want to learn a language, if you want to, you know, build a business, if you want to run a marathon, whatever your goal is, it's about breaking it down into daily disciplined actions that you do and that you make non-negotiable for yourself. And I think, um, you know, Jeff's principle implies that they're really easy things to do. But the, the, the thing is, for most people, they're also really easy not to do. So if it's, a, if it's a daily discipline that takes you five minutes, it's really easy to say to yourself, do you know what, like, oh, it's only one day, like, I'll do it tomorrow. Or, you know, if I skip a day, it's not a big deal. And yet when you do that, you lose the momentum and you lose what he calls the slight edge. And the slight edge is the thing that makes successful people successful, the fact that they make these non-negotiable commitments to themselves to show up. So, you know, in the context of building a personal brand, in the context of building a, a, a business or a product or a service or building an audience, you know, like you're a perfect example of this, Rebecca, like just consistent output of content, consistent output of message, showing up when you don't feel like showing up, you know, doing the work when you don't feel like doing the work and committing to it in that kind of disciplined way that eventually results in the result, right? And eventually results in you waking up one day and realizing that you've built something or that you've got muscles you didn't know you had or whatever it is for you and your goals. Yeah, it's that consistency and it really is showing up when you, when you don't feel like it. We've all been there. We've all been there like, the last thing I want to do right now is turn up for this training or this team call or whatever it is. But I always say, just get your body in the room. Even if your brain is not there right now, at least get your body in the room. Now, right now there is, you know, loads of wellness coaches. There's loads of coaches. How do, how do you stand out? How do you find your vibe? How do you attract your vibe? How do you attract who you want to work with? And, and how do you stand out? What's your, uh, what's your expertise for that? And I feel like for anybody listening who um, wants to hear Rebecca answer this question, you've got to check out uh, my new podcast called Experts, which I think the episode with you is coming out really soon. Um, because you talked about this idea of, um, you know, when you, oh God, my brain's just gone completely blank. What were we just talking about? We we're talking about um, the, uh, how to stand out. Um, yeah. So we were talking about, uh, you know, if you want to build a personal brand and work with clients as a coach, have an impact, take them on a transformational journey so often the strongest personal brand and experience that a coach or an expert can offer is the one that is founded on your own personal experience. So when you have a desire to transform somebody's life using, you know, your expert knowledge around health or fitness or well-being, it's about kind of looking at the journey that you've been on and saying, okay, what were the problems and frustrations and fears that I had when I was starting out on this journey? 
you know, that kept me stuck or, you know, kept me feeling confused or kept me in whatever that place is that you've experienced versus on the flip side of that, you know, what were the things that I aspired to? What were my own desires? What were my wants and needs? Like what, what were the goals that I set for myself? And suddenly you've got like this spectrum of, you know, fears, frustrations, problems, right through to aspirations, goals, wants and needs. And your job as an expert in terms of how you set yourself apart is to create your own unique flavor and personality injected process of getting your clients or your audience from that point A to point B as fast as possible and faster than they can get there themselves. And, you know, that's when you start to develop your unique products, your unique services, your your, your unique messages. And it's, and, and fundamentally it starts with understanding, like, what is that pain point that that person is, is experiencing? Where do they want to get to? And if I could break that down into the 10 steps that I would recommend someone could take to get there, what would those 10 steps be? And how do I get someone from zero to step one? And then how do I get them from zero from one to, to step two? And your, your message, your communication is going to be all around that. It's going to be around the problem. It's going to be around the solution and it's going to be around the process of getting them there. And so keeping those three P's in mind and then just being authentically you, just speaking your message and your truth and not trying to put on a hat that someone else is wearing because it looks good on them or, you know, trying to emulate somebody else's sense of confidence or purpose and instead really just just being as close a as close a version of you of you in real life online that's what's going to attract people that's what's going to make you uniquely magnetic to the audience that you want to serve and i think so many times in wellness it comes from a personal experience it comes from someone doesn't just wake up and be like oh i want to be in nutrition they've had an issue with nutrition or they've struggled with gut uh, you know things or they've struggled with bad skin it's always been from a personal you know experience so what i tell you know the people i work with too is like share your own experience like share you because you will attract someone that's been in your situation like you know if you um you know struggle to lose weight then that's going to be the type of audience that you're going to work with if you struggle to gain weight like you just share your story along the way you're going to be able to help other people but i think we're so focused on i need to find my niche i need to find my niche where you are your own, you're your niche, right? Because you can't, I'm not going to start talking about being a 16 year old boy. I don't know about anything like that. I know about being a female um, and how that makes me feel. Um, and so I love that you touched upon that because it's just going to reiterate um, what I share. I love one of the things that, um, and I'm really excited because uh, guys, you must go onto Lauren's website too, because she has um, uh, some free content on there that's really going to help you. Um, but I did a big, um, training session the other day about the mindset of a female entrepreneur. And so when I read this on your website the other day, I was like, oh my goodness, like this is literally what I taught on. Um, and I did this whole section of, you know, being an entrepreneur, being female and how we kind of, we do have the edge just being a female because we have a different kind of brain. Um, but for you, what is the success mindset for a female entrepreneur? What, what do, what do we need? you know like really seeing that as a woman you have a unique perspective is a really strong starting point but also you know that in that kind of feminine power that softness that empathetic viewpoint that you know willingness to listen and understand and you know allow a client to be heard you know there's so much strength in that and you know as far as kind of women in business the trajectory for for women is, I think I read a statistic the other day that in, um, in 10 years time, women will be making 80 to 90% of a household's income. That's the trajectory that women are on as far as earning potential, um, you know, more and more uh, women are succeeding in business, are coming to the table. And so, you know, the mindset of a female entrepreneur is, is, is firstly about understanding the possibilities that exist for you. Because I think for so long we've had examples set for us in generations gone by where we haven't seen the same uh, possibility that exists for us as 
maybe from our male counterparts. And so I think the most important thing in, in, in cultivating that success mindset is firstly to put yourself in the room with other successful women. And the best way to do that is, you know, to find a community of other entrepreneurial or big thinking women and put yourself in the arena with them so that firstly you get to see what's possible for you. And that's been, that has been the most instrumental thing for me in my entrepreneurial journey is making sure that I'm constantly exposed to women doing bigger, better things than I'm doing to show me what's possible. Um, you know, and, and when you see what's possible for you, suddenly your eyes open to, you know, to, to the potential that you are allowing yourself to step into. And it's then about supporting that with a cultivation of a belief system that is, you know, confidence in your own abilities, confidence in your willing, in your ability to learn new skills, to learn the craft of being a businesswoman. I think one of the biggest obstacles that I hear from my clients when we first start is this belief that, oh, but I'm not a businesswoman, you know, or I'm not entrepreneurial minded, or I'm not good with numbers, or, you know, all of these things that we believe about ourselves that just get in the way of us achieving. Um, and there's an incredible uh, author and motivational speaker called Brendan Bouchard, but who I think a lot of your audience will know about. And and he sort of talks about the fact that, you know, successful people versus unsuccessful people, people who don't achieve their goals, um, the difference between those two groups of people are that the person who approaches an obstacle like a, an attitude or a mindset of I'm not good with numbers or a belief in that says, you know, one group of people say, okay, so there's an obstacle here. I need to overcome it. So I'm not good with numbers. I'm going to learn to get good with numbers. I'm going to, you know, take a, a course or I'm going to sit with the spreadsheet until I figure it out. Or, you know, I'm not entrepreneurial. I'm not business minded. Well, what can you do to get business minded? Like we live in an age of, of information where you can read books and listen to podcasts and get good at business. And in that process, constantly remind yourself that nobody was born good at business. Like nobody was born an entrepreneur. It's a learned art. It's a learned science. And so your journey as a woman in becoming the success story that you, you want to create for your life and achieving the goals that you have for your life is going to be about, you know, um, adopting, adopting those mindsets, but also seeing obstacles as not something that is going to stop you seeing obstacles as an ability, as an opportunity to learn something new, to overcome that hurdle. And that's, you know, what Brendan Richard says is the difference between a successful person and someone who sets a goal and then doesn't achieve it is the willingness to say, I'm going to learn how to, to get past this. I'm going to learn a new skill, learn the craft, hone my craft and get better and better at this every day. You just like, I love it because you just repeat things that I say and it's when you hear it from somebody else, sometimes it's like, oh, that clicks. Have you ever had someone you're like, oh my goodness, I've just read this book, Rebecca. It's amazing. I'm like, yeah, I recommend that to you about six months ago, but someone else recommended it to him like six days ago and they, and they remembered it. Um, and I do say that all the time is that in an age now where we have YouTube and Google and you can literally find anything on the internet, you know, if you say that you can't do something, it's just because you're choosing not to find the solution. And you can either look at all the problems that you have, or you can look at the solution. And they are the two types of people. And, you know, we all have to learn this stuff. I feel like, you know, a lot of times somebody looks at somebody else in the industry and they're like, oh my goodness, they've got all this stuff put together. This is amazing. But we all have to start right at the beginning. Do you remember what it was like for you to get your first client? And, and how was that? What was that like? And were you like, I don't even know what I'm doing. <laughs> good to go back and, and think about these moments in time. And just on that point, like, you know, sometimes when I look at the people who I really admire online, like take YouTube as an example, there's a, there's a function where you can like flip the, the videos from like oldest to newest. And like, it's actually just quite humbling to see that that person started out with like a really low quality camera or like no editing or whatever. And just remind yourself that every successful person started out as a beginner. And the same was true for me, you know, like my first clients weren't even paying clients. They were people who wanted to take me for coffee and pick my brains in inverted commas. And, 
you know, when you do that over and over and over and suddenly realize that coffee doesn't pay bills and that, you know, like you're actually kind of good at what you do and you enjoy it and that you need a price for that, you take that first step. And for me, that was saying, okay, like I need an hourly rate for coffee meetings with me. And, you know, I didn't set out to become a business coach. It was just naturally what I enjoyed doing. And then as a result of that, you know, I put a price and a framework on it. And then I took a course in like building a a coaching business. And, you know, that course was five years ago. And, you know, from there, you know, I learned about the art of crafting a personal brand website and how to work with clients. And initially, you know, it was like, okay, let's meet up and talk about your business and you can pay me 90 pounds or whatever it was at the time. And so, you know, it's okay to create the kind of messy crap version first in your business. It's so important to do that. And, to not get caught up in what the big perfect picture looks like and let that stop you from taking step one. And this is coming from someone who I was reminded of this this morning because I spoke on another podcast and we were talking about like what we were like as kids. And I remember my mum sort of joking that for me as a kid, like I used to cry if I colored outside the lines because I was like such a perfectionist as a kid. And So, you know, for me in business, like I want everything to be perfect and polished and right the first time. And if you, if you fall into that trap, you, you don't ever start, you never launch the website, you never put your brand out there, you never sign your first client because you're waiting to be perfect before you launch. And that's the biggest obstacle for most entrepreneurs is waiting to be perfect before they launch. Uh, And I, adopted this mantra about four years ago which is super simple and you guys have probably heard it before done is better than perfect right and I had it on a post-it note I used to constantly remind myself just like put it out there publish it press press play on this and don't wait for it to be perfect before you start yeah I if I look back at my first app my first video the sound is awful um, it's on a $150 Sony camera. It's like edited on iMovie with all the terrible colors on it. Um, and it's just, it's awful, but it evolves. And even now, like even two days ago, I updated my website because, and I just updated it, but I wanted to update something else. I was like, God, that looks awful. And I was talking to a girlfriend of mine and we were like, every single month, I need to like update the PDFs for this challenge and do this. And I need to change this because every single month you will look back and you will be like, I can make this better. Even when you, so my idea right now of what's great is completely different to what I got started. Like if I looked, you know, back, you know, seven years ago and I could see this app out now, I would be like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. But now I've got it. I'm like, nope, we can make this better. We can make this better. So you're constantly trying to improve. And so you do just have to get started and it's going to be crap at the beginning. Like it's going to be crap. Like, but it's, it's better to have some crap out there that, you know, some people are going to actually buy because they want to, um, than not. And I feel like we get in our head about charging for things, but think about it. If it was you, right. You want to go out there. I want to pay for somebody's time. I want to pay for somebody's course because it's, you know, it's valuable. And so you have to kind of flip that switch on yourself as well. Um, I just want to ask you, I know that you've got five strategies to triple your impact and become the go-to expert in wellness, as it says on your website, but I'm going to make sure that everybody signs up for that. But can you give me two of those strategies? Um, and then I'm going to make sure that everybody goes over, uh, we're going to put all the details below so then get the rest of the five, but maybe just two, one or two of those strategies that you use. What they are. Let me... A really good question, but now I need to actually know what I share in there. That's okay. <laughs> Gonna be edited, right? Yep. Someone actually downloads this, it's gonna make sense for them. I thought that would be a good lead segue so that they can they actually go and get the others. <laughs> so, all right, this is gonna be edited out and I'll answer the question now. Okay. Um, such a great question. Yeah. And it's, uh, you know, it's a really powerful resource if you're just starting out and you know that you want to build an expert brand, you know that you want to stand out, you know that you want to have impact and you've got that knowledge to share. So the first thing really, really is something that we kind of talked about at the beginning, which is finding your sweet spot, finding your niche. 
But what I don't want people to do is overcomplicate that because as we talked about, you know, finding your niche is not some mystical land that we're, you know, some far off land that we need to go and discover. It's not Neverland. It's, it's present within you already. And it comes down to you knowing the problem that you want to solve for people. What is the problem that you want to solve? And going beneath that and saying like, not just what's the problem, but what's the fear that my, my client has that I know that I've had, that I've experienced, that I've overcome. And so that is about kind of taking up your position in the market, like taking up and taking ownership of that like piece of, 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 of the internet and saying like, I'm going to be the person who becomes known for solving that specific problem for that person uh, and really kind of stepping into that. I think the other thing too, on a more strategic level is it's so important when you put valuable content out in that in into the world to remember that you're building a business, right? So you also want to ensure that at the point at which somebody finds your amazing content, your useful information, you're actually able to start a dialogue with them that you can continue in a conversation in nurturing them and getting to know them because the reality is that, you know, 80 to 90% of people who find you online are you know, uh, have own, uh, are, are going to have just come across you. They're going to have just discovered you for the first time. It's like they're walking into your shop for the first time. And so it's really important to understand the power of capturing the data of your audience. So when you, you know, have a free resource, when you have a tool that you want to share with people, when you're creating this powerful contact, content is to have a really clear call to action that you know this person will give their name and their email address so that you can continue that dialogue so that when it comes down to what you actually sell as an entrepreneur as an expert or a coach that you're able to to share that with them and to continue to build that relationship and so i talk in my strategy guide about you know the importance of capturing data and understanding how you know lead magnets and funnels and strategies in the world of digital marketing actually work and be really being empowered by that knowledge and really being empowered to know that every time you create something valuable and share it online you're able to capitalize on the effort that you've put in by capturing the details of the person who who is looking at it and being able to actually then have a powerful conversation with them and nurture them to the point where they buy your product or your service and continue to engage with you in, in a in a way that is you know built on community and trust and them knowing and liking and trusting you enough to want to buy from you well you've given us two where do they go to find the other three where can they add their email in to find those five strategies if you visit my website which is laurenarms.co you can download the guide it's called the vantage point and the idea is that it gives you that view of how to actually build an expert brand how to triple your impact how to stand out from the crowd and and ultimately you know how to make an impact and make money as an expert awesome right we're gonna put all the links in the uh, podcast description i do see that you are have you got some speaking you've got one speaking gig already lined up for 2021 uh so that's awesome i saw that on your website something was up some balance thing amazing so make sure that you go check out lauren's website um it's it's amazing and definitely sign up for those five strategies well thank you so much lauren for joining us i can't wait to get this episode out because i know that this is like just what they need to hear right now uh so where can they find you on all of the social media platforms and your podcast Instagram is a great way to find me. It's Lauren Arms. Again, my name, super easy. My website, you already know. And from there, you'll find all of the links to my podcast expert, which Rebecca will be a guest on very soon. And I'm really looking forward to sharing your insights too, because you've built uh, an incredible business that will inspire so many. So thanks. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Lauren. Guys, thank you for watching this week's episode. Make sure you go give Lauren a follow and we will see you next week. Bye, guys about just having seven energy balloons and every single time you say like I'm not enough I can't do this you're popping your energy balloons right so don't allow those balloons to pop